It's all in your head. People say, "There was or there is a time when I realized I'm not only addicted to YouTube and Netflix. I'm also addicted to my thoughts." I wake up with the voice in my head. I walk around with it. I go to bed with it. I feel all my meditation sessions with it, and eventually I learn to act on it, whether it's good or bad, whether the sound acts like an angel or a jerk. Why does that matter? It matters because the most important conversations you ever have are the ones you have with yourself. Quote the retired Navy SEAL David Goggins. I love the saying from the book Soundtrack. One of the greatest mistakes you can make in life is assuming all your thoughts are true. The results of a 2020 study suggested that people typically have more than six thousand thoughts per day. While we listen to these lies, if they're lies. We tell ourselves all the time. We let them turn from thoughts to actions, from actions to results, and eventually let them control who we will become. That is overthinking. Overthinking is when what we think gets in the way of what we want. But why do we overthink? The antidote so says, when energy builds up inside. You want to do something about it. The voice talks because we're not okay inside, and talking releases energy. And there is nothing more important to true growth than realizing that you're not the voice of the mind. You're the one who hears the voice. Specifically, if you're hearing it talking, it's obviously not you. You're the one who hears the voice, who observes the thought. You're the one. Who notices that it's talking? So today I'm gonna use the book Soundtrack as a primary reference here, and I summarized three steps from the book, which I find most helpful to quiet the sound in our minds and hopefully help us cure overthinking. So, step number one: identify the sound. How do you know when some thoughts are hurting you? Well, they cost your time, creativity, and productivity. Sometimes it's about regret, like I should have gone back to my home country right after I had completed my degree abroad. I would be able to enjoy all the great food, be with my friends, and don't need to worry about the rising energy bills. Sometimes it's about fear. Who am I kidding to start a podcast? Especially as a non-native speaker, no one's ever gonna listen to it, and all my time, effort, and investment would just be wasted. I mean, this mic is not cheap. Sometimes it's about entitlement. I don't deserve this job. I'm a complete imposter working as a product manager from a non-technical background. Maybe you think it's obvious that these are all broken soundtracks, but how do you just To be sure, how do you recognize when you have a broken soundtrack? Here are three questions you can ask yourself. The first question is, is it true? The sound in our mind is naughty. It's so good at confusing thoughts with facts. As I've mentioned in the beginning of this episode, one of the greatest mistakes you can make in life is assuming all your thoughts are true. For my fear, would my life be better if I just had a home after I graduated? Maybe, maybe true, maybe not. Home is not a perfect place either. The job market in my home country is insane now. I might still live with my parents, and my old friends will all be very busy with their own lives. The good old days in schools are simply gone, no matter where I'm based. And just living in my childhood bedroom won't make me a child again. The second question is, is it helpful? I have a video channel in a Chinese social media platform called Red,、uh, which is like an equivalent or say like a combination of Instagram and YouTube, where I had forty thousand subscribers, 
If you want me to name one factor that contributes to how I achieve that, it's very simple. Take action. When I first joined the platform, I remember I just kept posting one video a day in a row for an entire month. Yeah, thirty-one days nonstop. I took action before I learned editing techniques, before I found my niche, before I had the perfect channel description. I just took action. It was all so fast-paced, and I didn't really care about like any、um, criticism or any. Stats because I was just too busy to mourn on a video that didn't perform well or think too much about a bad comment. I have no time to overthink like why me or why this video didn't perform as I expected or can I really do this? All I could think was, okay, this video is published now. What's next? Questioning yourself is not helpful because it takes away your time and energy for actions. You cannot think your next YouTube channel. You need to press record and post the first video. You cannot think your next relationship. You need to put yourself out there and cultivate that serious relationship. You cannot think your next job. You need to start building a portfolio, start networking, or at least, for God's sake, update your resume. Overthinking leads to a lack of action, and a lack of action leads to overthinking. The third and last question you can ask yourself is: Is it kind? One popular technique to tell whether a thought is kind, which I guess you might already be familiar with, is to see whether you will say that to your close friends. Do you want to tell your friends that they're the most stupid person in the world when they make a mistake? Do you want to tell your friends their life will never be better when they get into a slump? Do you want to tell your friends that they're ugly, they're lazy, they're inadequate, and Not worthy of love. While we tell this to ourselves very, very often, when I told myself that I didn't deserve the job that I have, I was the worst critic of myself. I expected someone who just kickstarted her career to know everything about the role, to act like a pro. I ignore the fact that many great PMs comes from a non-technical background, and I was unkind to myself. And by being unkind, by being harsh, I feel I have received the fair share of punishment, and I don't need to make real effort to become qualified for this role. There is a study I learned from a TED Talk about self-compassion. Very interesting study. It shows that people who are more compassionate towards themselves are more likely to avoid making the same mistake compared to people who criticize themselves very harshly after they make a mistake. Here comes the step two: turn down the sound. Now we've recognized those evil voices. Let's stop them. Unfortunately or fortunately, these voices cannot be stopped completely. As the metaphor in the book soundtrack says, it's not a switch; it's a dial. The goal isn't to turn it off forever. The goal is to turn down the volume. It's going to get louder sometimes. That's okay. That's just how dial works. The key here is how to turn down the volume. That's something you might be very familiar because I just said it before, like a few minutes before. Take action. You don't think your way out of overthinking. You act your way out. Overthinking leads to a lack of action. A lack of action leads to more overthinking. The actions here don't need to be something huge or something that takes lots of effort. It could be very, very little things. The book soundtrack listed fifty ways to dial down the overthinking, and I'll share three ways I personally love the most. My favorite number one is to write it down. The less I wrote, 
the louder my overthinking got. Um, I remember reading somewhere. I don't know what I was thinking until I write them down. I really love this saying. So say hi to your dear diary as much as you need. I was obsessed with journaling in my high school. However, in my third year, as the college entrance exam was approaching, I simply didn't have enough time for journaling, and I was in a really bad place mentally. It takes years for me to realize that it is when you're the busiest you need to write your thoughts down the most. You can then realize how untrue. Unhelpful and unkind some thoughts are. Morning pages, evening journal, sketches and diary—you name it. You write to listen to yourself. Self-care starts with self-talk. The tip number two is to talk to a friend. I know different people like different types of friends, and some do love friends who can criticize them and say. You know, say harsh things to motivate them, and it's totally fine. Personally, I like people who are more caring, loving, and supportive. Friends who can comfort me that, Kitty, you're enough as who you are, and we love you no matter what. Friends who remind me of how far I have already gone, when all I could think of is how far it's still left. Tip number three is to create a self-love kit. It can be a physical kit, it can be a digital file, it can be about your accomplishment, about good things you hear from people, or just a collection of your favorite items. For myself, um, I have a file folder in my desktop where I saved screenshots of all great conversations I had with people, or. Inspiring quotes I've seen on the internet. I also once put stickers on the wall of my huge moments in my life. It can be as big as I graduated first place in my undergrad, or as small as I receive a positive feedback from the professor after a presentation. Yes, I am still in the stage of life where I crave external validation. Not to worry if you are the same. We'll internalize the moments later. I believe there are also other ways mentioned in this book, like listening to your favorite music, dressing up, planning your next vacation. Please feel free to experiment. You know yourself the best. Next is step number three: create the new sound. If you can worry, you can wonder. If you can doubt, you can dominate. If you can spin, you can soar. Use your compassionate voice to replace the old voice. I learned a great way to、um, talk to myself in an interview of Gilbert's, the author of Eat, Pray, Love, and Big Magic. When she's not feeling the best, she would start a conversation with love in her journal, which goes like, "Me saying, 'Hey, love, nice to see you again.'" I want to talk to you about blah blah blah. Maybe like something happened in my life, and love will say, "I hear you, I feel you, and I will always be here with you." In Gilbert's way, love doesn't offer solution, but always offer compassion. For me, when I do this kind of journaling, I'd like to include both compassion and solutions because very often I will find myself is just the best therapist for me, and it makes me realize that I already have the answer in my mind. It's just being blinded with my overthinking before. Instead of saying, "I'm too short. I can never find someone special who can stand my height," I start saying. People have their own preference, and maybe the one of mine likes ladies who are not that tall. My height shouldn't define me. Instead of saying I'm not good at making friends, my friendships fades away, and it's one hundred percent my fault. I start saying, people appear in your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. The ping occurs when you put them in the wrong category. And it's okay that I'm not good at making friends yet. It's a skill 
No one's born with it. I can learn. I can improve. Instead of saying, "I'm so lost. I I'll never figure out what I want to do with my life," I start saying, "Of course, I don't know what to do with my life." I basically just started living my life. The answer will review itself as I go, as I try, as I grow. So, ask yourself, what do you want to be true? There are also some positive confirmation from the book, which I'll include in the show notes. I choose my thoughts. I know that doing my best starts with thinking my best, like laying a path for an adventure. These thoughts will set the course for my actions. I'm confident that what I think matters. I'm excited to see what happens next. I'm disciplined and dedicated to stick with it. The fastest way to make these confirmations come true is to turn it into action. And my action is to upload this episode that you're listening to right now. What is your action? Thank you so much for spending the time with me. I'm Kitty as in Hello Kitty, and this is Questions in Twenties, where we support each other to go through our core life crisis. Have a good rest of your day, and see you in the next episode.